Okay, let's continue through this uh, short little series of, um, well, kind of mobile-related code for uh, ActionScript 3 and uh, specifically using um, Flash CS5, uh, although this would, uh, the same code would work for um, some of your other projects, too, if you were working in um, uh, Flash Develop, Flash Builder, or Flex, whatever. Uh, but uh, if you haven't watched this uh, previous one that had to do with the accelerometer, that's okay. If you haven't watched this one, that's okay as well. In fact, we're just kind of starting wherever you want, and uh, you can go from there. So um, touch points. And again, uh, let me do make this clear that uh, even though this is kind of under the heading um, uh, mobile uh, flash, uh, this code is going to work for... Um, any sort of or most um, touch enabled devices that uh, are running uh, the uh, most recent uh, Flash player, okay, because that's the one that uh, opens up all this functionality to uh, being able to get past uh, thinking in terms of the mouse. So we are dealing with touch points, and let me go ahead and show you the code that is um, already in here. We're just importing in some extra uh, functionality here uh, for. Uh, touch events, multi-touch, and then we're setting the input mode to, this is the important part, touch point, uh, whereas you'll see later in one of the uh, other lessons, this would be, oops, gestures, or gesture, I should say. So we're um, just dealing with touch points here, and what we are going to be listening out for will be if, uh, can you guess, if someone ends up touching the stage, and of course this could be um, specifically uh, a symbol or an instance name of a symbol on stage as well. But for right now, we'll just go with um, putting this uh, event listener just right there on the, the entire stage. And uh, it's not that big of a stage anyway. This is kind of set up, or the document is set up to um, the uh, standard iPhone size, if you're holding it uh, vertically, 320 by 480. And one of the first things we'll be listening out for is the touch event, touch begin, okay? And when that occurs, let's go ahead and run a function here called on touch begin. And let's just go ahead and jump down here and set up that function. So we're just gonna repeat back this part right here. That's the function name. And then we can go and type, you can, go, you can put in here E if you wanted. Uh, if you want to be really short, you can put in EVT. You see that in a lot of uh, tutorials. Or you can just go with uh, event like so. Uh, we'll just uh, we'll stick with just using E here. And this is going to be a touch event. You'll notice, too, that this is the same bit right here as it is right here. Just uh, a little hint. It's usually the case, at least as far as I've seen. And we're not returning anything for this function, so we can just put void right here. And then the code that is between this bracket and this bracket is going to be what runs as soon as a, uh, the beginning of a touch event uh, occurs here. So uh, one thing we could do is move around a symbol um, based on where you're touching, okay? And I actually have a symbol on stage called zombie. Let me fold this out of the way. Here he is, okay, so this is um, just some vector artwork that I've got on here, and here is the instance name, at zombie, so we can communicate to this symbol. And we can write zombie.x, okay, so that's its x location, is going to equal e.stage.x. So where that event was um, uh, relative to the stage, okay, so the stage is x location, that's where um, the zombie is going to go to. All right, and then, of course, we do the same exact thing. Zombie y equals e dot stage y. And now, when we begin touching, um, that's where he's going to go to. So uh, let's go and just give this a quick test, even though not that much stuff is really going on here, but we might as well. So you go over here to Control, Test, Movie, and we're going to test this in Device Central. All right, so now just as soon as I hit uh, Test over here, we will get a separate application that comes up. And so it will look familiar if you did just uh, watch that accelerometer tutorial. You don't have to, though. There's not really that much to, um, to know about using... Uh, device central. Uh, we are going to go and let's uh, play around in this little tab right here, multi touch. And if you read hold, alt down, and click into the canvas to set touch points, okay? So uh, that would be, let's see, holding down. If you're on the Mac, I guess that's uh, the option key. So I'm going to hold that down, and you can see that uh, wherever I click, okay, so I'm clicking now. Um, 
wherever I begin that click at, he's going to go to. And sort of the tricky thing here is that if you if you keep holding down um, Alt, actually hold down both Alt and Shift to um, there's somebody above me, <laughs> clearly. Well. The first time you hold it down, you're going to get one touch point. The second time, you're going to get another touch point. And then it's saying if you hold down Shift as well, okay, so let's do this again, then you move them both at the um, same time. And that's kind of interesting that, um, <laughs> well, this is kind of the code that we're going to be making, <laughs> we're going to be putting here later on, but it's already working. I don't really understand that because it shouldn't really be, this is how it should be working right here is where it's not actually moving this guy around, but I guess holding down Shift is... Uh, causing it to think that uh, it's repeatedly running that um, touch begin. So let's plug in some more code. Okay, so uh, let's just copy this entire line right here, paste this in, and this next part will be on touch move. And let's go ahead and just uh, copy that fun part as well. And then let's just take actually this whole thing. And this will be on touch finish and oh you know what <laughs> I'm changing the function names here but I'm not actually changing the functionality uh, this will be move you guessed it and this will be end but uh, this goes everybody's doing the same thing at this point they're just moving the um, zombie around what we could do is have it so that we actually get a little bit of a change of appearance uh, when you're moving it versus just uh, when you press down and you finish it. So what we could do is write zombie dot go to and stop frame two and check this out. Why are we calling that normal looking guy zombie anyway? It's because on frame two of this, sure enough, he turns into a zombie. So let's just see if that is actually working. All right. Loading up Device Central again. Be interesting if it actually stayed running this application. Okay, here we go. Let me zoom in for a second. And all right, so I'm gonna hold down. And sure enough, now when I'm moving this guy, it changes. And then when I uh, let go of him, ooh, that's interesting. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that was my my bad. We we never actually um, set him back to uh, frame one, so. Now that should be running a little bit better. And uh, while the, this is loading up again, I'll just go ahead and um, tell you um, what we got ahead here. We're going to look at um, some of the touch point IDs so that uh, we can get a little bit more specific about uh, um, the, the exact fingers or the exact touches that we're holding. Um, pressing down here. So anyway, but, but still I've just got one touch and obviously he's on frame two and then as soon as I let this go, it should go back to normal. So I don't know what kind of uh, <laughs> game you could make with just this code right here, but it seems like you could make some sort of like little kid's game. I don't know. All right, uh, so that's definitely working and let's take a look at uh, these uh, touch point IDs. So what I'll do is set up a trace statement right trace and this will be e dot touch point ID and I'm gonna to try to go slowly through this instead of overloading us with various touch point ID or trace statements and, and all of those functions um, because that's kind of what I did at first and I, and I ended up confusing myself a little bit um, so all right now when I press down okay you can see that you get this one over here, okay. When I press down again, I get uh, two, and when I press down another time. So it's just going to keep going up like that, regardless of um, if I, well, re regardless if I let go. Oh, <laughs> that's a weird way of putting it. But you know, if I were to raise my um, pseudo, my virtual finger off of the touchpad, um, it's still going to keep going upward. So it doesn't kind of like reset back down to um, zero or one again. So again. Just going through here, I'm just going to keep adding up touch points. All right, now what happens if I um, click once and then keep holding down the uh, option or Alt key and click again? Okay, so now I've got two touch points on here. All right, so 
if this were in the non-device central world, if I was actually using a device with this, it's like I'm pressing with two fingers, okay, and you can see it just keeps going up like that. So with that in mind, we can kind of keep track of um, if you are holding down two fingers or not. Does that make sense? Because if we were to store uh, those touch points inside of a variable, okay, then we could query to see if uh, your current touch point ID is one more than uh, the, the variable. Okay, so well, let's see it in action. Okay, we're going to write var. This will be a touch ID. This will be an int. Or integer, so it's a nice little whole number. We're going to set this to be uh, zero at first. And then let's come down here and we'll just uh, comment this out for a moment or two. We will make um, touch ID equal to e dot touch point ID. Okay, so when you first begin touching, those uh, two will be the exact same. And if we wanted to, uh, we could take note of that, uh, not in the trace window, but uh, in this uh, little text box right here, my text field, why not? So let's do that. All right, my text field dot text equals and let's just write touch begin and let's take note of what um, touch ID is a little space in there though oops okay next Let's come down here. And instead of uh, making those two equal to each other, we'll test this out. So we'll say if uh, touch ID equals e dot touch point ID. In that case, let's just copy this, put that right back in there, and we can say uh, something like still using the same finger or um, same number of fingers, really, because if this were a different number, okay, then that would imply that you had um, touched with a, a different finger, so you added one finger in there. So uh, let's give it a shot.